Welcome to the instructions video, installation of load cells with Mueller. Be sure to install Mueller load cells only by qualified personnel. It is important that you mount them correctly. Improper assembly can result in damage and or affect reliability. Always take personal safety precautions and use protective equipment. Check that all materials are delivered as shown in the material list. Make sure that you have the tools ready as shown on the tool list. For the video, we made use of a fully installed tank. This can differ from other situations. Instructions in this video may differ due to the use of different materials. Always make sure you have the manuals with you. Step 1. Check if the tank is empty. The tank needs to be completely empty before lifting it up. Step 2. Assembling the load cells. For this step, you need the materials and tools as shown here. Place the foot plate on a flat surface. Place the fill plate on the foot plate correctly so that it will be aligned with the load cell. Next, place the load cell on the fill plate. The back of the load cell must now be aligned with the back of the fill plate. It is important that the load cell is marked with the arrow pointing downwards and the text is mounted legibly. Now, place the washer on the bolt and provide the bolt with grease on the wire end. Tighten the bolt with the hand. It is important that this be done by hand in order to prevent possible damage to the thread. Now repeat these steps for the second bolt. Put grease on the leg cup wire end. Tighten the leg cup by hand. Tighten the two bolts with a torque wrench. The amount of torque depends on the type of bolt. We use two different bolts. For the M12 bolt, we use 130 newton meters. And for the M18 bolt, use 400 newton meters. Repeat the steps to assemble all the load cells on the foot plates. Step 3. Place the load cells under the tank. For this step, you will need the materials and tools as shown here. Next, determine where the tank will be placed. Jack up the front of the tank and place the first two load cells under the first left and first right leg. Lower the tank slowly until the feet are placed on the leg cups of the load cell. Make sure the legs are aligned in the center of the leg cup. After the tank is placed on the first legs, it is time to check if the tank is horizontal. Therefore, a spirit level is used and placed on the manhole. When necessary, jack the tank up and turn the front legs in or out to make the tank horizontal. After this is done, you can remove the jack. Jack up the back and place two load cells under the last left and right legs. Keep the tank jacked up so the legs are not resting on the leg cups. Place the spirit level on the right side of the tank. Use these level points. The first pin here and the pin with the 140 sticker. Raise jacking up to level 140. Turn out the legs by hand. Continue to extend the legs until they rest on the leg cup of the load cells. Lower the jack and check if the level is horizontal. That means slope is now correct on 1 over 40. Correct with legs if necessary. Check the exit height, whether this is still at the desired height. Recheck if the tank is still horizontal with the spirit level on the manhole. Correct if necessary with the legs until the tank is completely horizontal. Check that all four legs are making contact with the load cell. In the situation that the tank has more than four legs, start placing load cells under all the other legs between the first and last legs. Extend them until they are all resting on the leg cups of the load cell. Make sure all the legs are aligned and touching the leg cups correctly. Step 4. Apply cable routing. For this step, you need the materials and tools as shown here. Quantities of the parts depend on the number of legs on the tank. Determine where the PVC T pieces have to be placed. Use a spirit level. Place it aligned with the end of the foot plate where the wire comes out. Now mark the center of the tank. This mark is the center. The pipe clamps must be placed on both sides, 8 centimeters from the mark. 
indicate the right position of the drill holes for the pipe clamps. Mark the right position and make a center point. Drill the holes with a 4mm stainless steel drill bit. Repeat these steps for all other T-pieces for all the legs. Mark points for intermediate pipe clamps at a maximum distance of 50 centimeters. Make a center point and drill holes with the 4mm stainless steel drill bit. Next, drill all the pre-drilled holes with the 9mm stainless steel drill bit. It's a stainless steel drill. To provide the holes with blind rivets, we recommend using a manual blind rivet tool as shown here. Put the blind rivet on the tool. Now squeeze the legs and unscrew the tool. The blind rivet is now fully attached to the tank wall. If such a tool is not available, there is another way to assemble the blind rivet. We will demonstrate it now. Tighten the nut on the bolt first. Then place the washer and put some grease on the wire end. Now turn the blind rivet on the bolt and put it in the drilled hole. To fix the blind rivet, use an Allen key and a wrench. Make sure you only tighten the nut. Do not rotate the bolt. Tighten the nut until the blind rivet is tight. Do not force it because it is stainless steel. After the blind rivet is tight, turn back the nut one twist and take out the bolt. Now the blind rivet is connected to the wall. Let's see how this works from the inside. The metal plate represents the tank wall. The blind rivet is screwed on the manual blind rivet tool. Put the blind rivet in place and squeeze the legs of the tool. The blind rivet gets squeezed together and tightens itself to the tank wall. Now release the tool and it is done. After all the blind rivets are placed, it is time to mount the tube brackets. After all the tube brackets are in place, it is time to measure the tube lengths. The pipes are used for cable routing, so do not use glue. The small tube is a part we use only for mounting. No cables will go through. Mark the point where to saw the tube to the place of the next leg. Saw the tube to the right size and remove any saw residue.
Now place the T-piece on the tube. In the video we have a tank with only two legs on each side. Repeat these steps if there are more legs. Measure the tube length from the back of the tank to the last T-piece and saw it. Get rid of the saw residue and mount it. Now we start the cable routing. First we place an end cap on the bottom of the T-pieces. Now drill a hole in the caps where the cables fit in exactly. Disassemble the tubes and guide the first cable through the cap. Guide the cable through the T-piece and now through the tube. Do this all the way to the back of the tank. Label the first cable as number one. Repeat these steps for all the legs, starting in the front and working your way to the back of the tank. Don't forget to label the cables. Assemble all the tubes and T-pieces together. Put the whole construction in place and tighten the cables and place the caps. Repeat all the steps to make the cable routing exactly the same for the opposite side of the tank. We are now at the back of the tank. Here, we place the PVC corner pieces on the cable routings. Step 5. Place the junction box. At the back of the tank, we marked the upper right corner of the stainless steel cover. The location of the junction box differs per tank and per situation. Choose the position so that the outcoming cable of the junction box can be added to the other cables and pipes that go from the tank to the wall. Make sure the box fits under the stainless steel cover. Place the junction box and make the first center point. Drill a 4 mm hole with a stainless steel drill. Okay. 
Now make it bigger with a 9mm stainless steel drill. Fix a blind rivet in the drilled hole and connect the junction box with the bolt. Use a level to mark the other holes. Repeat these steps and drill holes and fix blind rivets until the junction box is well secured. Attach the earth wire to the tank in the same way as the other holes are made, with a blind rivet, and use a bolt to connect it. Determine the routing of the cables and saw a PVC tube on the preferred length. Make sure the cables come out in the right place and close to the junction box. Unscrew the PCB in the junction box and mark the cable inputs with a 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Feed corresponding numbers of cables through the holes. Do this for all the cables. Place the PCB back in position and screw it on. Make sure all the cables come out behind the PCB on the right side. Fix the different colors of cable numbered 1 in the right positions on the PCB as shown in the picture. From left to right, black, blue, green, white, and red. Now do this for all the cables. Put the cables of the display in the lowest section, from left to right. First, the wire without a plastic socket. Yellow, green, black, white, brown, and red. Take the dry tablet out of the plastic back. The tablet has the function to dehumidify the air in the junction box. Place it in the junction box. Take the cover off of the junction box. Apply silicon compound on the gasket of the cover. Make sure the whole gasket is covered with the grease. Put the cover on and tighten the screws equally. Now you can put the stainless steel cover back on. Step 6. 
mount and connect the display. As every tank room is different, we cannot give a detailed instruction on placing the display. Find a place close to the control of the tank where you also have an electrical connection. Hang it high enough, but make sure you can still operate it. Make sure you attach the display with the correct plugs and screws for the type of wall in the room. Tidy the cables away. In the situation in the video, we used cable ducts on the wall. The display cable from the end of the tank is bundled together with other cables that run from the tank to the wall. Step 7. Settings on the display. Read the manuals that come with the display carefully and make use of the chapters that is needed. In this video, we will only discuss the settings that are absolutely necessary to be able to read the correct values. It is possible that the actions in this video deviate from the actions in the manual of the display. Check which ones are the right ones for your situation. Also, make sure before you start with calibrating the system that all the installation work, such as welding pipes together, is done. First, put the power plug in the socket. Now, there is an electrical connection on the display. Turn on the power while pressing key number 2 at the indicator front to start the set mode, or hold key number 2 for about 3 seconds to move from other mode to the conversion mode. For the next steps, use number 0 to 9 keys to change setup values. Press the Use key to save changes in the setup value and move back to the menu. Press the Cancel key to cancel the value and move back to the menu. To go to a higher menu, type the right number, but always use two digits. For example, to access menu 2, type 0, 2. Press the Set key to enter the first setting, F1. The first setting is the date. Fill in the date of today from left to right, starting with year, month, then day. After this, press the set button to go back to the menu. Press 02 followed by the set key to go to F2. Fill in the correct time from left to right, starting with hours, minutes, then seconds. Press set. For all the following steps, we recommend that you take over the settings as in this video. However, a different setting may be required in your situation. Please see the manual for the different values per setting. F3. Use setting 00. F4. Use setting 10. F5. Use setting 10. F6. Use setting 00. F7, use setting 1, 0. F8, use setting 2. F9, use setting 0. F10, use setting 0. F11, use setting 5, 0. F12, use setting 0, 5. F13, use setting 0, 2. F14, use setting 1. F15, use setting 0. F16, use setting 0. F17, use setting 00. F18, use setting 01. F21, use setting 10. F23, use setting 09. And finally, F25, use setting 3. After finishing the setup in the set mode, press the set key for a long time. The display tells you save. This means all the settings are saved. Step 8. Weight Setup To be able to calibrate the entire system, we must determine the measuring range. We do this by calculating the maximum load on the load cells. In the situation in this video, we are using a Mueller O600 tank. The maximum volume is 2,530 liters. The specific weight of milk is 1.03 kilograms per liter. The total weight of milk content is therefore 2,530 times 1.03, or 2,606 kilograms. The tank itself weighs 440 kilograms. For the weight of the pipes that are installed, we make an assumption of 300 kilograms, and it is possible that a farmer or RMO driver climbs on the tank. 
For this, we take a maximum weight of 120 kilograms. Altogether, we arrive at 3,466, rounded up to 3,500 kilograms. The tank's maximum volume and weight can be read on the rating plate on the back of the tank. Now, we want to access the weight setup mode. Remove the sealing screw to see the hidden button. First, use a tool to push the hidden button. Keep this button pushed while pressing the power button. Hold the hidden button until the display shows CAL1. Press set. Now fill in the maximum weight on the load cell as a measuring range. In this case, we calculated it to 3,500 kilograms. Now press set. For CAL2, we used setting one. Press set to enter CAL3. Continue to press set until the display reads unload. Look in the tank to make sure it is empty. Also, open the outlet if necessary. Remove any tools or material that is resting against the tank. If the tank is completely empty and clear of any extra weight, press set. It is possible that a value will now appear. You do not have to do anything with that. Push set again and load one will appear. Push set and you will see the maximum load again. In this case, it is 3,500 kilograms. Step nine, placing calibration weight. To be able to calibrate the entire system, a calibration weight of at least 10% of the maximum load must be used. In this case, the maximum load was 3,500 kilograms. 10% of this is 350. We have adjusted that upwards and opted for 400 kilograms. If the weight is less than 10%, or if you exceeded the maximum weight, the display will show an error. Make sure you use calibrated weight. In this case, we used weight blocks of 25 kilograms each. We use lashing straps to attach the weights to the tank. In order to not damage the tank, we have used protective cloths. Please note, these parts also count for the total weight applied. Therefore, we will first determine the total weight of these parts with a calibrated scale. Place a crate on the scale, then set the scale to zero. Fill the crate with all the items you need to use. Make note of the total weight. Now, we start hanging all the weights on the tank. Start with dividing weight equally on both sides. We used paper cloth to not damage the tank. On both sides, connect the lashing strap to the weights. Now start lifting. Make sure both weights come loose from the ground. Be sure the straps are not touching the ground. All the weight must rest on the tank. Now repeat these steps for all the other weights. Making sure the weights and the straps come loose from the ground. Step 10, weight setup. We go back to the display again. Here, you fill in the correct weight. In this case, we have measured the lashing straps and paper cloth together as 19.07 kilograms. The weights we have used was 400 kilograms. Altogether, that means the added weight is 419 kilograms. Fill in your correct added weight and press set. Press set a few times until the display is calculating by showing stripes. After this, it shows success and directly the added weight only. In our situation, that is 419. Now, remove all the weights and straps. When everything is removed, the display should read zero kilograms. Put the screw back on to close the hidden button. We advise that you seal this by using a sealing wire. Now you have successfully installed the load cells. Thanks for watching this instruction video from Mueller. For extra support, Contact your local Mueller partner.